Welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to go over the basics on how to identify textile fibers using the polarized light microscope. But first, a disclaimer. Make sure you read your MSDS sheets and follow all manufacturer suggested safety precautions when using any chemical or any piece of equipment. Don't let the world of textile fibers stress you out. They can all be boiled down into two simple categories, natural and synthetic. The total global production of natural fibers is pretty much completely taken up by cotton, with between 1-2% to silk and wool, depending on which reference you're citing. Now, as far as synthetic fibers go, that category is almost entirely made up of polyester, considering it's used in clothing and carpeting and all sorts of different applications. The next would be nylon, which has extensive use in carpets and upholstery. The rest is mainly acrylics. Then, of course, you have a little bit of other things like orlon, and rayon, which happens to be a synthetic version of silk. Now, in terms of identifying textile fibers and dust, then this really helps things out because nearly 85% of any of the fibers you're going to run into is either cotton or polyester. Now, characteristics of cotton include a ribbon-like cross-section and a positive sign of elongation. Now, processed cotton fiber tends to exhibit kinks, dark patches, and striations across the fiber as a result of damage incurred during processing. Cotton also displays an undulose extinction during examination with cross polars. When immersed in 155 refractive index liquid and observed with central stop dispersion staining, the fibers will exhibit blue and yellow dispersion colors. Polyester exhibits a positive sign of elongation. However, due to the material's propensity to be difficult and display a more uniform yellowish color, it can require examination by Becky line to determine this characteristic. This polymer also exhibits a very high birefringence. Because of the refractive indices of polyester, in 155, the fiber will exhibit a blue color when parallel to the polarizer or the vertical orientation, and a bright whitish yellow color when perpendicular. Now let's move on to rayon, sometimes known as viscose or viscose silk. Invented sometime in the mid 1800s, rayon was used as a cheap replacement for silk in basic textiles until the onset of World War II when nearly all production went into parachutes since silk mainly came from Japan. Rayon exhibits a positive sign of elongation and uniform extinction. The fibers can periodically appear to have a grainy or finely pitted surface. Now under central stop dispersion staining in 155 refractive index liquid, rayon often exhibits a blue-white to blue-green dispersion staining color in the perpendicular orientation and blue magenta in the parallel. Now on to acrylics. Orlon is DuPont's trade name for their acrylic fiber first produced back in the 1940s. Acrylics are the only synthetic fibers to exhibit a negative sign of elongation. Widely used in clothing, carpets, and upholstery, these fibers often exhibit a trilobal cross-section noted by the banding running the length of the fiber. Under cross-polarization, Orlon exhibits a low but uniform birefringence. Under dispersion staining in 155 refractive index liquid, you'll find that Orlon has a very uniform dispersion staining color regardless of orientation. Now let's see that effect when we place the fiber in its like refractive indices of 1.524. The same holds true for acrylics with an oval cross section that you might find in clothing. Now let's move back into the natural fibers and talk about silk. Being a material harvested from silkworms, the thickness can vary significantly as well as the cross section which can vary from round to nearly ribbon-like. Typically these fibers exhibit minor to no deformations like you would find in processed cotton. It's this smoothness that gives this fiber its silky texture. Silk also exhibits a positive sign of elongation and a birefringence is around 0.05 to 0.054. When it comes to identifying silk, you have to be careful when it comes to the refractive indices. As you can see under dispersion staining, the colors mimic that of cellulose. This is where you really have to pay more attention to the morphology of the material itself, the smoothness, 
the variation in the thickness and the cross section, and specifically the lack of any surface damage that you commonly find in cotton. Now I promise this is the last fiber of this tutorial, and although it is a pesky fiber to identify, its use warrants discussion. Here we have wool which, unlike cotton, silk, or the synthetics, is mammalian hair harvested from one of several animals including sheep, alpaca, goats, actually mohair is from North African goats. Then you have alpaca, which is not a goat, it's some kind of cameloid, but it's from Peru, which makes it the most expensive stuff in the world. Then you have cashmere, which is from India, and camel hair, well, that's from several species of camel, but that's usually blended together with other lesser wools to keep the price down. Wool, like all natural hair, exhibits a positive sign of elongation, low to moderate birefringence, and a blue to magenta dispersion staining color when prepped in 155 refractive index liquid. Things that differentiate hair from other textile fibers include a medullary structure, though not all hair has these as you can see, a round oval cross section, and cuticle scales. Now here's where your refractive index medium really makes a difference. When you're prepping something that has the same refractive indices of your liquid, in this case 155 liquid, and hair, which is roughly the same refractive index, you lose relief. Now when you're looking for hair scale patterns, which is what you're going to need to differentiate human hair from wool, get rid of the refractive index oils altogether. Use propanol or water. Here you can see the difference between the imbricate scale pattern of human hair and the mosaic scale pattern of wool. There is a better way to see this scale pattern in greater relief with simple clear nail polish. Check out the video on hair scale pattern preparation for more details. And that ends our brief little tutorial, but I'll leave you with some information on the characteristics of the most common textile fibers that you tend to find in dust samples. Thanks for watching.